Hi, welcome to day two of Vlogmas. It's the 2nd of December. It's crisp, it's cold. Lots of little Vlogmases have had little dustings of snow around the UK, which is not very common for this early in December, certainly here. Um, it's very frosty this morning and I'm feeling a little bit festive. <laughs> So to, um, I hope you enjoyed yesterday's vlog. Um, it was a tour of tour. It was a tour of tour Abbey Winterfest, um, and then I've rounded it off there because I thought half an hour is plenty of time for you when there are so many vlogmases out there. Um, last night I just had a really chill night. I, I was so looking forward to it. So I edited the vlog and then we got, um, Robin had his advent calendar, um, his book advent. It was very sweet um, and, and that was fun. And then I sat and chilled and watched Vlogmases. Admittedly, I may have stayed up way past my bedtime. <laughs> so I started off by watching uh, So Sweet Samuel's pre-Vlogmas. So Lindsay is my aunt. Um, she dives down many crafty rabbit holes and after years um, she's built the confidence to start her podcast so she's been going for a couple of years now and she does vlogmas hers are very much like I'm just going to sit and chat to you pretty much like we are now with no extra editing or b-roll which actually I kind of find quite refreshing um, and I think lots of people like that as well so do go and check that out um <laughs> Uh, then there's the other one I watched was Mina of the Knitting Expat. I was slightly invested in that one, to be honest. I love seeing the girls. Mina's a very good friend of mine and I do miss her. It's been hard leaving friends behind, I've got to be honest. So it's nice to kind of catch up with her, although we talk every day anyway. Um, but I also um, had organised a little surprise to be sent to her, which arrived yesterday. And uh, yeah, so it arrived on time. Hurrah! <laughs> so that's good. I made her a little mini advent which i didn't show in any of my pre-stuff because i didn't want her to find out i don't think she watches my stuff but you never know uh and i also watched um penrose knits first one it was very much staying up past my bedtime i really enjoy laura penrose's videos they are so beautifully edited with really lovely cinematography so those are the three I've watched so far. So three, oh, and Crazy Sock Lady's first one as well. Crazy Sock Lady was just taking you through her advents, um, which, and her plans for them. Um, but yeah, so th four very, very different vlogs. Um, have you seen any good ones yet? Do pop your comments below about what we should go and watch. Um, so yeah, so all in all, I stayed up way past my bedtime and, uh, I got, considering it's quite a dark yarn, I did quite well. I finished yesterday the leg. So I think last time I showed it to you, it was sort of here. So I finished the leg. I've worked the heel flap, picked um, the heel turn, and I am part way down the gusset. I've done maybe about four gusset decreases so far. So I've got, I mean, obviously still got a fair few to go. How many have got? I did put that to one side. I was, I thought to myself, right, I'll stop working on it soon because my eyes are getting really tired because it is dark. And when you're doing the decreases, you do really need to keep an eye on what you're doing because you decrease every other row to make that triangular wedge that's the gusset um, to shape the foot. And I thought, I thought I'll stop in a minute. Um, but then Crazy Sock Lady's Vlogmas came on. I was like, well, it'd be rude not to knit socks. So I did another 15 minutes for hers. And then I got out, I'm about to try and open a cushion, that won't work, will it? And then I got out my last year's advent calendar. So I had a yarn advent calendar last year for the first time, only time, I saved up for it. And I got For the Love of Yarns advent calendar. Um, I love Lisa's work and I love Lisa as a person as well, but there we are, right. It's, I don't know why I was worried about it being small. Now I've got it on bigger needles. It does seem quite sizable. <laughs> so I am part way through colour 12, which is this lovely turquoisey teal. What I want to do is try and add a colour each day if I can. Um, so I'll finish day 12 today and then because then it'll be finished by the 14th if I manage that. Is that maths? Oh, yeah. yeah, finished by the 14th and then it will be in time to get in the post because I think this is going to be a Christmas present for someone. Um, I, I did this whole thing where 
I'm not really going to do any gift knits this year. And somehow I found myself doing loads. And I was like, oh, okay. I haven't written them down in my Yule log book. Because if I write them down, that makes the pressure very real. And I don't want that. So what's on the cards for today? Uh, it's a work day, but I've got a little bit of time now where I can start to get myself a bit more organised and tidy. I want to gather my craft supplies together for the yarns I'm planning to use over Christmas. And to be honest, just a pretty basket of yarn to look at to make me feel happy. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> and um, finish sorting out our books and things like that. I've already done some swapping out of books in Robin's room. Um, we've done his room Montessori style, which promotes independent learning. Um, and he's thriving with it. But he's got lots of books. And so every so often we just cycle the books out. And I've um, whipped out all the Christmassy books I had for him already and obviously we'll be adding to those with his new advent calendar as well so yeah let's uh go and turn this absolutely unholy mess into something slightly more aesthetically pleasing and you know the best bit if you're doing anything for aesthetics is make sure you're doing it for you and i really am i think it's gonna make me so happy just to sit and look at this basket of loveliness even if i don't make much out of it it's gonna be a lovely decoration my yarn can be decorative as well as practical William Morris would be so impressed. Up on the housetop, reindeer paws. Out jumps good old Santa Claus. Down through the chimney with lots of toys. All for the little one's Christmas joys. Ho, 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 who wouldn't go? Ho, 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 who wouldn't go? what a day <laughs> um i went off to work um and unfortunately one of my team was taken sick so um we were down a staff member and uh, it had been really quiet before she left and everyone in the Torbay area decided to descend on us 10 minutes after she left <laughs> we made it but wow do i know about it anyway um yeah so um i left feeling I'm gonna be honest really overwhelmed I enjoyed going through my stash and putting my festive basket of yarns together but as I was doing it I was obviously going through boxes now bearing in mind I significantly reduced my stash before we moved here I gave loads of bits away I had a couple of big D stashes where I um where I sold a lot as well um so bearing all that in mind hang on I can hear the dog. So the dog had um, been let out to do his business and the door was ajar, like not, not ajar, but ajar, like big enough for him to get through. And he was just sat on the back step crying because it is minus something out there. And now I've got a very cold puppy with very cold ears, haven't I? Can I see you're worse than Milo now. You've been watching that Milo dog, haven't you? On So Sweet Samuel getting into everything and you've decided you want to get into everything too. Mm, right down down away so yeah I enjoyed going through and I, I I decreased my stash significantly before we moved I'd given loads away I'd had some actual selling D stashes as well um, and I haven't bought much really this year 
not in the grand scheme of things, not considering to what my intake of yarn used to be. Um, and I haven't been gifted that much either, although obviously I did have some cat bed yarn from Jude. But faced with that, um, a lot of which I had planned projects for, and also I was discovering bags with works in progress that had slipped my mind. I mean, faced with it all at once, I actually found really overwhelming. And I left for work feeling not festive and excited, but utterly miserable. Um, yeah, a way to kill the festive spirit in myself, huh? Um, so when I got home, like before I went to work, I popped it on my piano stool beside me. And actually when I got home and I walked into the living room and I saw it, I felt full of festive joy again. So phew for that. Um, and here is my completed festive basket. This isn't all the festive yarn I own. Um, I've definitely got some more of the West Yorkshire spinners knocking around. I don't know where that bag's gone, so I've got to hunt it down because they're socks that I had wanted to do for my dad. Um, although looking at this, I'm not going to get through all this anyway, am I? I'm not going to take you all through what it all is now. You would have seen on the montage enough. Um, but as I pull things out from the basket to work on, I will share them with you. There are a couple of intended Christmas gifts in there and um, some other bits and bobs as well. So what we're going to do tonight, because we are going to my mother-in-law's for decorating and mulled wine tomorrow, lovely, lovely Sunday, um, is I'm going to give those um, cinnamon stars a, a try. So we're going to head into the kitchen now and um, see what we can whip up. Oh my gosh though, how about a little bit of real life? Oh, supermarkets at this time of year. I do not want to go now, between now and I think possibly February. That will do me. Oh my gosh. Very few tills open because obviously everything's moved to self-service. But because it's Christmas, everyone's got trolleys and that makes self-service very difficult. And also you're knackered and sometimes you just want a human to do the scanning for you and possibly to have an adult conversation where you're not being insulted. Um, or to be fair, everyone's really, really nice at work today, but it's not the point. Um, and like every other till was open. And weirdly enough, there were like two people on each till. So I don't know if they were till training their festive staff, but it feels a little bit late to be doing that. Um, but there was no acknowledgement of the wait times. No, oh, hi, thank you for waiting. Or sorry about the wait there. Just nothing. Not, not that there's necessarily anything they could do about it, but they just like pretended it wasn't happening. And the people were like queuing up the aisles and round the corners. It was bonkers. Anyway. <laughs> So luckily for me, baking actually calms me down a bit because I clearly need it. So we're going to head into the kitchen, which is beautifully clean and tidy because my hubby has dealt with it for me while I've been at work. I say for me, for us while I've been at work. And we're going to have a go at these cinnamon stars. a little bit of a mare. Um, this is clearly American based for books which is fine because I've got cups, measuring cups now, really cute measuring cups that are half price from Habitat and the number of recipes I find on Pinterest that call for cups and I can never remember the conversion. Um, and also baking and cooking is like a science, it's, it's a reaction between things and actually getting the amounts correct I find is really important. Turns out powdered sugar is icing sugar and I thought we had enough here. Um, turns out we don't. And also it's the one thing I didn't pick up from the supermarket. So we're gonna go off paste already and use caster sugar and hope for the best. So 
you know how if you're knitting or crocheting a pattern and we say read all the instructions not necessarily a full pattern first but at least read the next row or the first row for the first set of instructions and read the whole row so you know what you're doing yeah haven't i've just dumped all the ingredients in a bowl <laughs> Uh, so it turns out you're supposed to reserve half of a cup of sugar to whisk with the egg whites, um, which I have not. I have merrily stirred the sugar into the uh, it's meant to be cinnamon, don't have any ground cinnamon. We've gone for allspice, almost got mixed spice. I just happened to notice on the picture on the front I had garlic and just stopped myself because mixed spice is what we use for something different. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I've got my three egg whites though. So I'm gonna whip those up and then I'm just gonna add a little bit more sugar. If anything, they're just gonna be extra sweet. Oh yeah, and the vanilla extract wasn't supposed to go until the end either. And that's in there already. So this is gonna go really, really wrong then. I hope this is giving you a giggle. Oh, let's see how it turns out, shall we? Also forgot to hit record just then, so I don't know what you've seen. Um, you've missed my beautiful whipping. Um, looks interesting, doesn't it? It's like Father Christmas with a, with a Santa hat on. Those are his eyes. Oh, don't be rude. It's not a topless gonk. Oh, you're so naughty. <laughs> um, yeah, turns out the tartar was meant to go in this bit as well. I'm not gonna put more in because the whole thing will end up taking for tasting like dish soap. So um, we're just gonna go with it. Yay. Let's reserve half a cup of this for the topping but I've just put my eggs and the burst yolks in my half a cup so now I'm gonna have to like do two quarter cups I really should read the recipe says sticky but manageable I mean it's not that sticky but I think that's probably because I've got way too much sugar in there um but yeah so it says wrap it and leave it for an hour so that's what we're gonna do don't know quite who I thought I was thinking yeah I'm gonna do a cooking thing and it's gonna be lovely and it's gonna be really aesthetic and we're gonna have such fun and I'm gonna have these perfectly baked cookies at the end of it and uh, cinnamon star cookies at the end of it and it's gonna be so much fun it's gonna look all beautiful and i know what music i'm gonna put it to and oh my god who, do, who the bloody hell do i think i am eh? oh my days so anyway reading the recipe it says i've got to leave it to chill for an hour so that's what i'm gonna do we'll see what on earth comes out of that fridge um and uh if any of you are playing my vlogmas bingo it was in my stories i'm making the hot chocolate all right this comes calls for a hot chocolate. <laughs> in the interests of research and providing you with meaningful and useful content that you can actually get something out of and add value to your festive season. Um, I was dispatched to get a hot chocolate tonight because we've run out. Um, and so I've got a couple to try. I thought we'd review them. So tonight's is Starbucks signature hot chocolate. Um, made Robin one early because he wanted a hot chocolate. He was not impressed. He was like, no, and pushed it away. Um, so I'm not sure how much of a review that is. So I'm doing that with hot milk. And I've got to remember to take the teaspoon out of the cup before we put this in the microwave. Don't want an exploding microwave as well. Um, yeah, I'm going to go and sit for an hour and watch some Vlogmases and we'll see what on earth these cookies look like in a minute. Hooray! Right, excuse any ambient noise you can hear behind me. The mister is trying out our new tea station. That sounds much grander than it is. We've moved the kettle. <laughs> but I'm loving it because it's giving me a bit more space. Although the fruit is over here, so I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm about to get the dough out the fridge. So yeah, we're going to see what comes out of the fridge now. Um, let's see what we make. When you're making cookies or baking there is 
a temptation that most people, myself included, give into, which is to eat a little bit of whatever it is in the room. Tastes awful. <laughs> Tastes bloody awful. <laughs> I mean, it could just be me because I don't like marzipan almonds because I don't like the flavour of marzipan and this uses almond flour. So, I don't hold up much hope for this. <laughs>